So understanding compaction in the soil on your farm is important for many reasons. If your soil is compacted, it can severely inhibit the development and the growth of the roots of the plants that you're trying to cultivate. And it can also inhibit the infiltration of water and air, which is essential for the health of the microbiome of your soil. Now, though there are very precise instruments, such as a penetrometer, which can give you detailed readings on exactly how compacted your soil is, you can also get very useful and fairly detailed information from common tools and materials that I'm sure you've got on your farm. So let's explore some of those. The three most common tools that we would use for a compaction test are a shovel. I like this one, this spade style, because it's more straight and it's a little bit easier to get a direct action down below, which makes for a little bit of an easier reading. I'm using this walking stick, actually it's an old one, which can be a stand-in for a piece of rebar as long as it's not too thick, or a fence post, such as a fiberglass or an aluminum one works just fine as well. And the last is a soil probe. You can usually acquire these pretty easily. I actually made this one out of a steel pipe. So they're pretty easy to come by. And you can see the diameter is about uh, 25 millimeters. Now, of course, before you get started, it's essential to make sure that the soil is not completely dry. If it is, it's going to throw off your readings. Whether it's sand or clay, they're all going to feel or act more compacted if there's no moisture in them. So make sure that you're doing maybe a one or two days after uh, a rainfall, but also that the soil is not waterlogged. If there's standing water on there, that will also skew your results. Now, when you're using a piece of rebar, a fence post, or other type of pole, I usually like to get some of the organic matter off the surface so you get a bit more of a clean reading and it's easier to see where it's hitting the ground. And then without using your full force or putting your entire body weight on it, push into the ground and by the time it really starts to give you resistance, that's when you stop. You don't need to really ream on it and you're not going to bounce on it for sure. Go ahead and grab it right at the point where it meets the ground and hold on to it there because that's what you're going to be measuring. With a tape measure, you can see here I've got 12 centimeters. Now, if your post barely breaks the surface and you're using quite a lot of force, that's very hard compaction. Anywhere between one and five centimeters using significant force is also hard compaction. Between five and 10 centimeters is considered moderate compaction. If you're between 10 and 20 centimeters, that means there's no significant compaction and you're in the good range. If your fence post or stick goes in easily without much resistance and you can get it in there more than 20 centimeters, then you have no compaction at all and this is really ideal. Now likewise with the soil probe, we're going to use moderate pressure to go into the ground. And this one, since it is a wider diameter, we can twist a little bit before we start pushing significantly. And that's about where the resistance really starts. Now on this sample, I'm getting about seven centimeters. You can use the same scale for compaction as you do with the fence post or the rebar. In the case of a shovel, we're not going to measure how deep it goes down. We're going to look into how difficult it is to press the shovel in. So if I simply press with my foot and can get this down deeper into the ground, that would be very decompacted soil, very loose soil. This is what it looks like when there's no resistance and no compaction. This one would be either moderate or easy. There's some resistance, you're using both feet, maybe wiggling the shovel around a little bit, but still, it goes in quite easily. This might look like a difficult test. You're using both feet, you're jumping around a bit, you're wiggling back and forth. This would be moderate to difficult compaction. This one here, nothing is going in. It's very difficult, you're using both feet, you're jumping and wiggling and it's barely going in. This is heavy compaction. Now be sure to keep in mind for these tests, the texture of the soil that you're testing. If you have very clay rich soil, that's probably going to tend towards more compaction and be a bit tighter. If you have very sandy soil like I do here, one of the few advantages of sandy soil is that it tends to resist compaction. So the scales that I just explained for each of the different tools is more useful if you have a moderate combination of silt or loam somewhere in between. 
If you're on the extremes of that scale, keep in mind that you're probably going to tend towards compaction with heavy clay or tend towards decompaction and light soil with sand. And so a light reading might actually not be very useful. It could still mean that you're losing water very quickly. Now, of course, the learnings of a test or a measurement like this is always in tracking the progress over time and with changes in management on your farm. So be sure to keep close records and use the farm health report card tool to make this easier to organize and to understand the data that comes in.